Hi everyone, I'm Vanessa Kamatsi. Welcome to Interview 360. My guest today is a basketball legend who burst onto the scene when he was drafted by the Milwaukee Bucks back in 1969. His success with the Bucks led him to join the Washington Bullets in 1977, where he made history with his team a couple years later, becoming the first professional U.S. sports team to be invited to play in China. We'll talk more about that historic visit later, but first I would like to welcome NBA All-Star Robert Dandridge to the show today. Hi, Bob. So good to see you. Well, thanks for having me, and it's a pleasure to be here. You played at the top level as a professional NBA player. You are a two-time champion and a four-time All-Star. Was there one defining moment in all of your career that you're most proud of? Well, that's a two-fold answer to that question. The first being having won the championship here with the Washington Bullets uh, and being an intricate part of that championship. And the other part is having my number retired as a Milwaukee Bucks. That means nobody else will ever wear that number, so don't ask for it if you come to Milwaukee. You know, you, you dream about certain things as a young kid, some people dream of being a professional hedge fund person or a doctor or an astronaut. My dreams at night were to be a professional athlete. And uh, I virtually lived basketball night and day as a youngster. So basketball has just always been a passion and uh, it just so happens that it worked out well for me. I would say it worked out more, more than well. Let's talk about 1979. That was a historical trip. You were playing with the Bullets. You went to China. It was one of the greatest, probably, adventures of my life, and I called it an adventure because we got a chance to see places that you only read about. We probably didn't realize the significance of the trip. We knew Nixon had done some things, and that was historical. But for us, once we got there, we realized that it was a historical event, um, not only as far as basketball, but as far as U.S. citizens being able to go into the country. Absolutely. And it was... Um, it was a landmark vacation. <laughs> you know, we as athletes, we just thought it was a vacation that Mr. Poland was just this nice guy, but when they started using words like the State Department and, you know, we being ushered around by, by the top officials in China, then we realized, wait a minute, this is not just a basketball thing. This is an international breakthrough. You were so privileged. How were you received by the Chinese people? It was an air of excitement in Beijing at that time because we were the first U.S. team to come there and especially the first U.S. team to play against the Chinese in China. So it was a big thing and as we moved around the city, even before the game started, they had banners uh, with our pictures and names on it, but they also had the banners and pictures of their own players. And in fact, I can't remember the name, but they did have quite a few good players. I do remember that, and it was a tough game. What? Okay. It was not an easy game, and uh, but it was uh, just exciting. Um, in fact, I still have the basketball, the Chinese basketball, one of the Chinese basketballs that we use. You you kept it after I, I all these years. Yeah, I didn't. I kept it. That's over amazing. These years. How long? How long were you guys there for? Uh, for twelve, thirteen days. Okay. Days. Did you really get to experience the culture? Did you get to go see the Great Wall? Oh, for sure. I mean, to go to travel to the Great Wall from Beijing, which was about a two and a half hour ride, have walked and spent time in Tiananmen Square. So to actually, to and to see the panda bears that weren't in the Washington Zoo. Right, <laughs> Zoo. you were in China. Yeah, <laughs> we were in China, China for real. 
and um, to eat real Chinese food and not American Chinese food, because I guess some of us, me included, was ex expecting uh, chicken and broccoli or eggs. General Chow's General chicken. General Chow's chicken, but we, we saw none of that. And so you you really got to try it like you because I had read that your trainer John Lally actually had packed like thirty cans of tuna in a yeah. suitcase and one of the players lived off of that. Oh, so yeah. but you that wasn't you. you no, you no, were no, no. And and then it was a a cultural thing not to offend your host at that particular time. But the food we did eat. It was tasty. Um, they drank a lot and toasted a lot at every me <laughs> meal. And so that was good. That was a good part, <laughs> part of being there. Uh, and if I had the opportunity to go again, because I would love to see it as it's functioning today, with the modernization of it. And speaking of changes, how everything goes full circle, because I know the uh, the players, now they're traveling here. I know that they were re they were this year at the uh, Capital One Arena. Was it the uh, Guangzhou... Uh, the Guangzhou Lions came to play okay. for the for the match, so it's it really has come full circle. Now we've got Chinese players coming to the U.S. and we've got conversely U.S. players going to go play in China and yeah. signing contracts there. Yeah, so I think Stefan Marlborough has done tremendously well there. In Andre Vit Lache uh, as well yeah, from the yeah, Wizards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in their entrepreneurship efforts and with. Uh, some of the uh, quite a few Chinese players having come here to play and they've done well here. So uh, the NBA, the world, everything is such a global thing and China has such a large population. What <laughs> business wouldn't want to be involved uh, in China? How do you see the state of the NBA now? I mean, the game has changed so much, right? It's changed in line with the societal changes. Uh, it's what the millennials want to see. They want to see the three-pointer. They want to see athleticism. They want to see the dunk. Uh, it may not be basketball at the purest of forms. It's, I think it's a big entertainment factor that's involved, and it's part of it is... You know, kids come in at such a young age, so the fundamentals on the game has been lost. But the millenniums want to see entertainment, and, and the league has been smart enough to provide entertainment. But you think it was a tougher game when, when you were playing? Oh, yes. Yeah, much oh, yeah. tougher it was, it was It was a much tougher, more physical game. And uh, back then, you only had 10 positions on a team. Now you may have 15 and you still got three more guys that you may carry. Uh, I can rem remember one night uh, when Mr. Poland was living, uh, his wife asked the question, uh, how many coaches did we have when we won the championship? And somebody said two. So her question to Mr. Poland was, well, why do we need six coaches and we can't even get in <laughs> to the playoff. That. You know, that, yeah. was, that was one of your friends, a, a Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. A female was thinking. Right and there, yeah, right. Yeah, thinking right ahead. There. Yeah. Well, Bob, it's been so great getting to chat with you today. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me and uh, what, hear all your stories. And thanks for having me here and especially giving me the opportunity to share our stories and my experiences in going to China. And if you ever get a chance to go, you must go. Indeed. And thank you for watching Interview 360. We'll see you again next time.